Well, aren't you lucky? You get a bonus Happy Tuesday video from Uncle Brian tonight. Something I meant to say the other day and I forgot about it. And a couple of new things came to my attention. One, on a somber note, uh, I am now aware of the individual that has a serious health problem and I hope he pulls through it. Um, I'm also aware that Sanford is pleading with people to go sub his channel to get him to a million views and watch his videos because he needs some money. That, I laugh at. You know. What if there was no YouTube? This quest for subs views to make money. You know, like I said, you take money out of the equation, how many fucking people do you think would be here on YouTube? You know, there would be very few of us, you know. Uh, <clears throat> I've had people ask me, hey, how's your buddy Lambshaw doing? He's doing okay. We still stay in touch. Um, unlike Sanford, when I develop friendships with people, they last for a long time. Some of mine go back to grammar school days with us. So I the a phone with him the other day. And then he texts me, and I'll show you. See Whammy? I got him on speed dial. This was... Hey Whammy, checking in on you. I'll read it, and then I'll show you the video clip he sent me. Checking in on you, see how I do it. I'm awesome brother up here in Kentucky, working, announcing at a drag strip full-time on weekends. We're having Nostalgia Nationals. Me, good to hear, was thinking about you. Have fun. Just please don't say boogity, boogity, boogity. Let's go racing, boys. He puts a bunch of laughing, smiley faces. Then he sends me a clip from the tower. Oh, and then I replied, don't want to see you get sued by Daryl Waltrip. <laughs> he starts laughing. Then he sent me this clip he took from the tower. Uh, but at the time, it, it was like sending. It wouldn't upload, so I texted back. Whatever you sent isn't loading. I assume it's a video at the track. In order to make a picture of Mama Chumbu, because I just ate. Then he laughs. Okay, then I, okay, I loaded. Cool, a lot of participation. Pretty good night. This is what the clip he sent me. Those are race cars. Those are hot rods. Not like that fucking no show nationals where people are racing their minivans with their kids still strapped in their fucking car seat in the back and their groceries in the back and a couple of soccer balls laying around on the fucking floor, you know what I mean? Uh. <coughs> yep, anyway. Uh. <coughs> the fuck is going on here? Anyway, I was sorry to hear about this individual. However, you know, once again, the panhandling for money uh, <laughs> does not su surprise me on YouTube because that's what it's about for people, money. Feeding a bank account and feeding an ego and narcissism. In Sanford's case, it's all three. Uh, I heard he... Uh, He's got that mule car at a shop, that one that was sitting behind his house or the yard for fucking ages. He put the slant six from Plan 9 from out of space in it. He pulled the engine, sent it to the fucking scrapyard, just like he did with the Mazda Miata. Pulled the engine, sent it to a fucking scrapyard, sold it for scrap. And now he took that slant six out of that, was it 2,100 pound car? It was so gutted, it looked like it was attacked by a fucking woodpecker or a meth with all the fucking holes in it. <coughs> There's something going on here that ain't right. Uh, and, uh... <laughs> now he's got it in that 
four dollar Belvedere. It's all heavier. <coughs> She's gonna drill all kinds of holes in that fucking thing too and take two doors off it. Oh, that's right, you don't have Alice, someone else should do all the fabrication on it for him, like on the MC Hammer guy. What does he expect that thing to run? But his pickle sniffers are gonna think it's a badass guy because it sounds mean. Hey, you pickle sniffers, for some reason you seem to think that how a car sounds is, determines how fast it is. <laughs> Thought playing nine sounded mean, huh? Huh? Thought that sounded mean too, didn't you? You thought the Mazda Miata sounded mean, didn't you? Oh yeah, you're gonna think this sounds mean too? You know, these days, I gotta tell you, these days, you don't really need a mean motor to sound mean. Back in my day, you had thrush mufflers and cherry bombs, and, and then walkers came along. Walker was a nice sounding muffler. These days, when your magnet flows, your boiler exhaust, you're this, you're that. Baffled, baffled crimp, like, you know, the uh, exhaust they put on the early C28s, they called it a chambered exhaust. If you looked at the exhaust pipes running back to that cross mounted transverse resonator in and out, it was a real dual exhaust. It was crimped so the airflow would be broken up and give you a little more sound, a little better rumpity rump sound. We got mufflers and exhaust systems today that can make you sound like your car sound like you got a full race, fully built cam in that fucking engine. And it's really not. It's sound. It's all it is, sound. So I'm sure this four-door junk will get glorified as well. A lot of excuses will be made why it breaks down if he ever gets it to a track. Oh, the MC Hammer car is, uh, said he's getting it back together. He's hoping to get it to a track in a couple of weeks, unless I heard incorrect. If I'm wrong, correct me. Uh, what else, what else? You know, I kind of hop on this, and I admit it, I do. When I see people fucking begging for shit, I fucking laugh. Maybe it's the era that I grew up in. When a person has some sort of fucking self-respect and dignity, you wanted something, you fucking worked for it. You didn't go out and beg, and the only time you would beg for things if you were, you know, back in the Depression, you didn't have fucking food on your table, your kids were hungry, yeah, you'd go out and beg. I would fucking do it in a heartbeat if I ever found myself in that situation. But when people are doing kind of okay, they just want something they don't want to pay for, and then they're fucking begging on here, you know? And people that live their life not holding a full-time regular job where they're paying taxes, they're paying into Social Security, they're paying into a health care plan, you know? They get older, they get sick, whatever. They have some sort of protection, something to fall back on. But a lot of people, they like working that cash money, paycheck to paycheck, and freelancing, and they don't pay into anything. And it's like they say, you get what you put into something. You don't put anything into anything, you get you get nothing in the end, and you're fucked, and they're on here fucking begging. That I have no sympathy for. I know I see a lot of things that are not very popular, and you know why? Because I have the freedom to do it, because I don't give a fuck about popularity like these people. I don't care if someone unsubs my channel or don't watch me. I don't give a flying fuck. They do. I'm not on YouTube to get anything for any self-personal fucking gain. They are. In one way or another. You know, people these days have no problem fucking begging. Facebook, you got, you know, GoFundMe's. We know about those. They're fucking scams. You know what on here is the same fucking shit. Different venue, different format, but it's just different name, but it's the same shit. People fucking trying to get money from total strangers on the internet. You know? You know, it didn't dawn on me at the time, but Austin Powers, when he built his four-door junk, $27,000 old beat-up Valiant, 20. I don't know about you, I know what I could do with 27 grand. I'd have something a hell of a lot better than that, let me tell you right now. You know, it works and performance. But a lot of that was panhandled. I remember Sanford, more and more is coming back to me. Sanford even started the ball rolling, and then Austin picked up the slack. Hey, you got to help these kids out, you know. You can send them some money, send them some pots. They could use all the help you could send him. Now, Austin works. He's got a job. He's not exactly fucking broke. You know, Mr. Swinger, you pointed this out to me, and it's very true, and I'm glad you did. Not everyone will be able to see a comment, so I will elaborate on it here, so hopefully more people will be aware of what you said, that it's so very true, and people should listen to what Mr. Swinger said. Very true. Why these guys aren't fucking no piss poor? 
living in a tent or a camper in a fucking cornfield somewhere. They're living in pretty decent homes, you know what I mean? They're doing okay. They're not rich, but they're not poor. They're what you call regular middle class, you know? They're okay. They don't have a whole lot of worries in life, you know? And Austin was begging for money. Then he, hey, you know, if you could help us out, people sent him money. People sent him pots and some very expensive pots for that guy. Just an aluminum intake already set up with all the nitrous ports. Those things aren't exactly cheap, but somebody sent him a clutch, somebody sent... He got a lot of value in pots, plus cha-ching cash to put that thing together to support that bill. He could have afforded to do it himself. He just didn't want to fucking do it. Same thing with Sanford. I had forgotten all about this. This goes back to Storage Rocker City. In fact, that was my first. Number one, Sanford's Greatest Hits. Collection CD. That shot straight to the top of the fucking shots on Billboard. Take me down to the storage of Rocker City where the cars are junk and they run real shitty. Oh, won't you please take me down? And Sanford started that baby bottle rocket. Him too. He panhandled like a motherfucker. Telling people, hey, you know, I got this for 300. I want, I'm going to get it to run a 10 or a nitrous. But, uh, you know, I, uh, I would appreciate your support in the build if you can send me any money, any donation. He fucking begged and panhandled his fucking pathetic ass off to get support for his fucking bill because he didn't want to fucking pay for it himself. Don't you guys have any fucking class, any fucking self-respect? Well, I know you don't have class, Hamp. You made video stuff in your face with cake and pie and crumbs falling all over and you chomping. I do recall... See, when you had your grand opening, at your, you know, even at your world global headquarters, who the fuck around the world knows about you? Well, like a whopping 20 people showed up from every corner of your fucking neighborhood. It was all old, fat, pot-bellied, balding hillbillies walking around there. No cars to see. Nothing going on. You had your little fucking abachi set up feeding them those fucking packages of 99-cent fucking hot dogs. Man, you know how to put on a fucking full spread, man. Maybe people that aren't, aren't high-class weddings should fucking hire you to cater it with your fucking hot dogs. And he's walking around, tromping on, can't even, you know, he's talking, can't even stop yakking to chew. The fucking hot dog's playing peekaboo out of the side of his fucking mouth, poking out, he's trying to jam it back in with a bun while he's still fucking yakking. He wouldn't shut the fuck up to even fucking chew and take a fucking swallow of a fucking hot dog. No fucking class whatsoever, this guy. No fucking class. He fucking begged for support for that build. You know? People today don't seem to have any problem doing that. They want things but don't want to fuck don't want to fucking pay for it. So people go on with their scams and bullshit on Facebook. You know? And believe me, a lot of people got caught. You know lawsuits came up out of that? People got sued. You know, oh, this, that happened, a terrible tragedy. They find out, you know, the Christians want to take a fucking vacation to Hawaii. I have a very good friend down in West Virginia. I got a very good friend in Arkansas. I've been to these parts of the country. I got friends in Texas. I still got friends back in Arizona. I got friends up in New Hampshire that we visit periodically. Friends next door in Rhode Island. I get around. I have the money, the means, and the time to travel when need be, you know. Like a lamb shot me, he tells me, Brian, next time you're down here in Tennessee to see your two cousins. I got two cousins in Tennessee that I visited on a few occasions. Brian, man, take a few extra days. Come stay with me. We can hang out for a few days. I know you don't drink. It's just not my thing. I love plenty of Mountain Dew. He knows I love my Mountain Dew, you know. Have some Mountain Dew. And uh, we'll go hang out and have some fun for a few days. And I'm going to take him up on that next time I'm down there. I might even drop in on a few other people, too. <laughs> Even when I'm down there, I get a good deal in a fucking t-shirt. And instead of having an order it online, I can buy it face-to-face. -face. What do you think about that? But man, people today... And I'm not going to single Sanford and Austin Powers out. There have been others. One guy, I think a little before I encountered Sanford. You know, you see where these people live. You know, this guy's got a real nice fucking garage. You see the house, you see the na how, neighborhood. It looks like a pretty nice neighborhood. <coughs> He's got a 68 Camaro sitting in the interior. is kind of fucked up. Uh, no engine. I <coughs> hope we're not coming down with something. Uh, no engine in it, no glass in it. I'm talking about, oh, I got this. Um, 
Uh, I picked it up off someone that ran out of money on the restoration. The body's all done though in primer, it just needs paint. I have all the trim pieces, the interior needs work, it needs glass, it needs an engine. I was kind of hoping that, you know, some of you here could help support my build. He was asking for money to help finish his fucking car. Why? He didn't want to pay for it himself. How that other guy ran out of fucking money and sold it to him? Now he don't have the money to fucking go further on it. He wants people on YouTube, total strangers, to pay to complete his fucking build. What is it with you assholes? Don't you have any fucking class, any self-respect... Any fucking morals? Fucking beggars. Some things I can feel bad about. Others, when I see people begging for subs this because somebody needs money, I got no fucking sympathy. Maybe they should have planned their life a little bit differently. Had a regular job like a lot of people do where they're paying tax every week, they're paying into SSI, they've got a healthcare plan. So when things happen in their life, they don't have to be fucking begging on YouTube or Facebook or any other place. Because to me, a scam is a scam no matter what. Two different formats, two different venues, two different names, but it's still you're fucking trying to hustle money from people. Okay? See, I don't care how unpopular this makes me. So I don't give a fuck about being popular. You know? But, yeah. So that's what's going on with these guys. How's the Crip Keeper scam doing with that 318? Oh, I heard Sandy. I heard Sandy selling fucking t-shirts now too, huh? Cool. Now we're selling t-shirts. I guess he has time to get this YouTube flea market going, seeing he's not doing any work on that fucking 318 that he was supposed to. And Santa's not doing it. Crip Cape ain't doing it. You know what I mean? I offered up a way to help not only St. Jude's but four other very important organizations with a one-time contribution. Or set yourself up on a monthly for six months, a year, two years. Entirely up to you. You can throw money at a YouTuber. See you tomorrow for Happy Wednesday.